Now let's calculate uh, surface integral given by a parametric function. Once again, this parametric function is a vector function where we have multivariable functions of u and v in the i, j, and k components, and they describe some surface. We're integrating a three variable function over a surface. And it'll turn into us replacing the x, y, and z in the function with the parameterization f, g, and h. And the d sigma, the piece of surface area we had seen from before uh, when you're parametric is found by the, uh, the cross product between the u partial and the v partial of this, of this position function, of this, of this uh, pair parametrization, and then we take the magnitude of that. And that gives us some uh, parallelogram of the uh, tangent plane. And, um, and so we allow u and v to, to, uh, to change, and that gives us a double integral that we calculate. Okay, and it's a surface integral. Let's go ahead and uh, work out a particular example. I'd like to calculate the surface integral where the multivariable function x, y, and z, uh, we call it g, that function is simply just uh, z minus x. And the integral, the, sur the surface that we're integrating over is part of a cone. It'll be the cone z equals the root of x squared plus y squared where uh, z is between 0 and 1, and we want to parameterize it. So we'll parameterize it using cylindrical, where x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta, but the z is not going to behave like a z. Since z must be the root of x squared plus y squared on the cone, on the surface, then in polar, z is equal to to R and so that will be the uh, the last part of the parameterization. Remember the parameterization is just uh, x, y, and z functions of of, um, of other variables. So uh, x is a function of R and theta, y is a function of R and theta, and z is a function of R and theta. There's just no theta involved. It's theta independent. And so we have to figure out then well what happens with with R and theta. Like what uh, what are the bounds? Once we get the bounds for r and theta, then we're just going to plug in this formula. We go back to the original function and we replace the, the z minus x with the, the r and theta version of that. And we have to go and find uh, the partials r of r and r of theta. Take a uh, cross product and take a magnitude. Then we'll be able to calculate this integral. So we parameterize the cone with this vector r where x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and z is r. What about the bounds? Well, z behaves like r. z is r. So since z is between 0 and 1, then r will be between 0 and 1. And the theta bounds are, are um, not that difficult to figure out. We're going to let theta go the whole gamut from 0 to 2 pi. All right, great. So now let's go calculate the partial derivatives of r. We need the partial derivative of r with respect to r and the partial derivative of r with respect to theta. r being this, this bold r is the position vector, the parameterization, and the, the r that's inside is a variable. That's our r from, from polar. So r sub r would be to take the, the r derivative of the first component and get cosine theta, the r derivative of the second component and get sine theta, the r derivative of the third component and get 1. Now we take the theta derivative where the cosine theta has minus sine theta as this derivative. Sine theta has cosine theta as this derivative and the third component has no theta in it so it has 0 as this partial derivative. We have to cross these two vectors. So we set up the cross product where we cross out i's column and i's row, and we end up with 0 minus r cosine theta. We cross out j's column and j's row, we end up with 0 
plus r sine theta, but remember j's uh, part of the cross product gets a negative on it. And finally, we cross out k's column and k's row, and we get r cosine squared theta plus r sine squared theta. And cosine squared plus sine squared, that's our friend 1. So the cross product is simply just minus r cosine theta minus r sine theta and r. That is the cross product of those two vectors, those two partial derivative vectors. We need its magnitude. So we square each component and add. And here comes again another cosine squared plus sine squared. So this will be a 1. When you put these together, times r squared, we have this other r squared over here. So all together we have 2r squared that's underneath the root. And that's convenient. So that's r times the square root of 2. Um, let's rewrite g. g is equal to z minus x, and, and z is r, and x is r cosine theta. So that's what g is, and we have r root 2 for, uh, for the magnitude of r sub r cross r sub theta. Now, um, we're ready. We have uh, g rewritten. We have the, the uh, this magnitude of the cross product here. We multiply these together. We have the bounds on r. Let's just have a simple um, double integral to calculate. Simple because the the um, the region that we're integrating over are um, the r and theta have numerical bounds. So r goes from zero to one. Theta goes from zero to two pi. We plug in that g of function, which is r minus r cosine theta. We plug in the magnitude, which is r root two, and then we get dr d theta. Don't get this confused with uh, double integration in polar, where we need to replace dA. This isn't that. There's no dA involved in this. To, to call dA, you know, r dr d theta, there is no dA in this, in this uh, surface integral. You're not integrating over a, a two-dimensional area. You're integrating over a surface. It's a different setup. Although we are using r's and thetas. And so what happens is we can factor out this r. And it'll be left with 1 minus cosine theta. Multiply by this r, we can pull out this root. We end up with root 2 coming outside. And two simple calc 1 integrals. We go from 0 to 1 on r squared. And we go from 0 to 2 pi on 1 minus cosine theta. So the r cubed over 3 from 0 to 1 gives you a third. That third can come out and be divided by, you know, the third can be multiplied by the root 2. And then we integrate 1 minus cosine theta. But actually, you know, this is a whole period of cosine theta, so it's going to be zero, the area underneath there. So we're just going to end up with a theta here. But if, say, we just go ahead and say it as theta minus sine theta, when we put the 2 pi in, it gets, this part gets zero. When we put the zero in, this part gets zero. So we just end up with this guy here, root 2 over 3, multiplied by the 2 pi. That's our final answer for the surface integral. We integrated over part of the cone. Okay, great.